Hello everybody, Friday, it's the 22nd of May today, it's the third anniversary of the Manchester Arena bombing. Uh, anniversaries can be tough, anniversaries of difficult events, so if you lost someone on a particular date it's quite hard to uh, to navigate those dates again. Uh, also, those people's birthdays and Christmas and wedding anniversaries and stuff like that. Once you've lost somebody, that grief, yeah, there, there's a big reminder, I think, quite often, and that grief comes back. So for me, on this day, the anniversary of the Manchester Arena bombing, uh, I'm feeling that grief again. And grief is one of those things that doesn't go away. You don't um, recover, really. Um, you just learn to live with stuff. And that's true whether you've lost someone that you love or it's just a, a terribly tragic event. And for me, the Manchester Arena bombing was, oh, gosh, really, really touched me, really traumatic. Uh, I wasn't there. I wasn't in the arena. But I could have been because... My daughter likes or liked Ariana Grande and I asked her if she wanted to go to that concert and she thought about it and she was torn. Half of her wanted to go to see an artist she admired and half of her said, oh, it's a school night, it's going to be a late night. And thankfully the conscientious, sensible side of my daughter won out because it was a toss of a coin toss of a coin we could have been there and that could have changed our lives forever I could have lost my daughter I could have died we could have just been caught up in the trauma of the whole thing uh, but we didn't thankfully but I still felt that trauma still felt it and something for me changed on that day I remember going into Manchester the following day it just felt different I felt different the city felt different I suppose it's a bit like the, the pandemic now. Walking around places now feels different to me. People act differently. There's a kind of serenity in the air, but also a sadness and a fear in the air. And I think that was the same. For me, I felt that in Manchester the day after the bombing. I felt it felt quieter. There was a kind of respect. People kind of looking at each other in, in a more respectful, more, more humanitarian way, but also a sadness. There was a grief there and it was tangible for me. I felt it viscerally. Um, and the fear, yeah, underneath all of that was some fear that, gosh, this could happen again. This could happen to me. And it's the same now, I think, with the pandemic for a lot of people. People are finding they're united in a sense of grief and fear because any one of us could be touched by this virus any one of us could die or have someone close to us die so yeah just making that parallel this morning whilst walking through the beautiful countryside that i'm very grateful to live amongst and yeah, anniversary is tough. You know, it really shook me, that bombing really shook me. And every year since, I have felt that grief come back. And I wonder if you guys um, maybe feel something like that too. Maybe not necessarily around the bombing, but just around some kind of anniversary that saddens you. If you do, it's okay. It's okay. It's normal. Like I say, we just, we don't get over the loss of something that's really important to us a person or an event or a job we don't it's not something you get over it's something that we adapt to and learn to live with so that's that's what's going on for me the other thing i wanted to talk about was tony slattery so there was a documentary last night horizon on bbc2 you can catch it on iplayer i recommend it it's a, it's a tough watch but it's all about tony slattery's mental health he was a comedian in the 80s and 90s. Whose line is it anyway? I used to really enjoy that improv, improv show. And he was this kind of larger-than-life clown figure. Very funny, very quick. 
uh, dashing chap with this uh, very sharp sense of humour. And uh, he disappeared from public life pretty much. And he, it turns out that he's had a lot of mental health problems, he's had addiction issues. And the whole programme was around trying to, trying to get a diagnosis for him. Because he's never really gone there to find out what's, what's been going on with his mental health. And I was left a little bit frustrated by the programme because I don't feel it did justice to all of the issues that were presenting for him. And he didn't actually get an answer, but a lot of it came down to his alcoholism. And for me, his uh, substance misuse was to hide the pain or to numb the pain of his childhood trauma, which they touched on a little bit. And I was just thinking, kind of screaming at the screen, you need some EMDR, matey. Go and get some eye movement desensitisation and reprocessing to deal with that trauma. And then you can start looking at your addiction issues. Because, you know, as I've said before, with addiction, you can't make someone change. The person has to want to change. It's clear to me that he didn't really want to stop drinking. It's, uh, it's, uh, the talons were in him and he wasn't ready to let them go. So tough, dual diagnosis, mental health issue plus substance misuse. Quite often those people fall between two stools. They don't get the, the kind of support that they need because what they're passed from one service to the other. Mental health people generally won't work with them until the addiction issue is solved. The addiction people don't know what to do with the mental health issue. Uh, and like I say, you, first and foremost, the person needs to want to change. They need to want to give up. And I don't think he was there. Not quite. So very sad. Very sad to watch that. A tough watch, especially for me, that his, um, his situation was quite reminiscent of somebody close to me. So it was quite painful for me to watch that and uh, know that, yes, I'm, I'm powerless to help that person. I'm powerless to help the person in my life who has similar issues. But um, good to be talking about it during this Mental Health Awareness Week. Good to show some kindness. And Tony Slattery, you know what came through for me? He's a lovely man. He's a kind man. As somebody said, there's not, there's not a bad bone in his body. And it's just tragic what's happened to him. He's kind of let the addiction dominate his life and he has become a shadow of his former self. But there were these lovely little glimpses of the, the Tony Slattery that I knew and loved back in the early 90s, I suppose it was, when I was watching Whose Line Is It Anyway? And, um, yeah, it was lovely to see that there's still, he's still in there. So, bless him. Uh, I hope he manages to overcome his addiction issues and gets the help that he needs around his own mental health. Yeah, gosh, it was quite frustrating. I was thinking, oh, I, I know how this person could be helped, but yeah, you can lead a horse to water, can't make him drink. I'm pretty confident actually that he will, he'll make progress. He'll make some progress during the filming of the programme. So Horizon. Tony Slattery. It was on BBC Two last night. Catch it on the iPlayer. I'll put a link to it on the Hive and maybe you want to spend an hour of quite uncomfortable but moving and important viewing. So whatever you're doing today, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you can have some kindness in your heart for people who are suffering with addictions. It's not their fault. It's an addiction, it's a disease, it's an illness, it's not a choice, it's not a choice. Nobody chooses to be an alcoholic. Nobody chooses to have bipolar disorder or depression. It's, uh, it's a disease. But we can all recover from these diseases. And this pandemic, we're going to recover from that as well. And the Manchester Arena bombing, if you're touched by the grief of that on this anniversary, may you navigate that well. And if anyone wants to talk about it, feel free to engage in the comments or send me a message. If anyone's feeling uh, overwhelmed, you want to have a chat with me, we can set up a 15-minute call free of charge. 
pretty busy today, but very happy to find some space if, uh, if anyone's really struggling today. Okay, so be well, enjoy your Friday. Hope to see some of you on the connection and meditation and support Zoom this evening at eight o'clock. If not, catch you soon. Take care. Toodaloo.